Hello and welcome everyone to the session Knowing Different Salesforce APIs. First, let me thank entire Pakistan Dream and Coordinators for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Now, let me introduce myself. I'm Sandhya Sambashivan, Salesforce Architect at UST with more than 12 years of experience in Salesforce. Also an application architect and Kuchi developer group co-lead. You can connect me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Thanks to all our sponsors for success of this event and special thanks to Trailblazer community. Let us see the agenda. First is introduction to API, different Salesforce platform APIs, API limits, comparison and use cases and demo. Let us go to introduction to API. Let us start with what is an API. API is application programming interface. It is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. In simple terms, applications communicate to each other using API. In today's session, we will be seeing two categories of APIs, I mean Salesforce APIs. The first one is Data API, which is used to manipulate your Salesforce data and other API, which is used for other customization from a metadata standpoint. So let us go to each one by one. Here you can see that there are two classification of APIs. First one is the data API under which we have REST, SOAP, bulk and streaming. On the other side, we have other API which consists of metadata, tooling, chatter REST, GraphQL which is still in beta. You would have used at least one of these API in your Salesforce experience. So let us go into detail in each one of these API and what it is used for. First, let us go to REST API. REST means representational state transfer. So REST API is a simple and powerful web service based on RESTful principles. So here data is exposed via REST resources and HTTP methods. You can do all sorts of operations like create, read, edit, delete operations, then search or query your data, retrieve object metadata, and also access information about your limits in the org. So all these kind of uh, items you will be able to do using the REST API. Then it supports both XML and JSON. Since REST API is lightweight in terms of the request and response framework, it is very easy to use and it will be suitable for writing mobile and web apps. Next is SOAP API. SOAP means Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP API is a robust and powerful web service and it uses with web services description language file to define the parameters for accessing the data through API. Now when I say about WSDL, there are two types of WSDL, Enterprise WSDL and Partner WSDL. Now Enterprise WSDL is used by the customers and ISVs to build integration specific to their org, Salesforce org. Whereas in Partner Web WSDL, it is used by uh, development partners looking to create some generic integrations for multiple Salesforce org. SOAP API supports XML only, unlike REST, which supports both XML and JSON. Since it is using WSDL, SOAP API is great for writing server to server integrations. Now let us see Bulk API. Bulk API is a specialized RESTful API for handling large volume of data at once so it can load or query 
more than 50,000 records. Okay, so bulk API is designed for large for handling large volume of data. So it is asynchronous, meaning that you can submit a request. Meanwhile, uh, bulk API will sub, after submission of request, it is it will handle the uh, the data. Uh, it will be loaded. Uh, it will be handled in batches and uh, once the data is completed, you can come back later for the results. Also, you can check if the job has been completed uh, using a bulk API query. And there are two versions of bulk API, version 1 and 2. In the demo, I'll be showing the version 2. Next is the streaming API. Streaming API is a specialized API for setting up notifications that trigger when changes are made to your data. So it works in the publish subscribe model in which users can subscribe to the channels that broadcast certain type of data changes. So this will reduce the number of API requests by eliminating the need of pooling. Now as this works in this pub sub model. It is great for writing apps that would otherwise need to frequently poll for changes. Now we have platform events or change data capture which are using streaming API which works in the pub sub model to pass the data. So we are done with the data API. Now moving on to the metadata API. So the main purpose of metadata API is to move the metadata between Salesforce org during the development process. Like if you want to do a deployment, then metadata API is the right API you are going to use. So it will help you to deploy, retrieve, create, update or delete customization information such as like object definitions, page layouts, etc. And since um, this is dealing with the metadata, we cannot use metadata API to work with the data which is available in, in Salesforce. Rather, it deals with the customization information like metadata. Moving on to the next slide. If you want fine grained access to an org's metadata, then you should be using tooling API. Its SOQL capabilities for many metadata types allow you to retrieve smaller pieces of metadata. Since it is allowing you to get smaller pieces or smaller element within a complex type, this can be much easier to use than a metadata API because it improves the performance. And thereby, tooling API will be better fit for developing interactive applications. If I give you some examples, it can be used for uh, continuous integration or an Apex class or trigger deployments. Or if you want to run test class asynchronously, then also you can use, you can see that when you're using a developer console, if you run a test class asynchronously, or you want to query some, some Apex classes, then you can use, you will be seeing that you are using tooling API in developer console. Now let us see the next slide. Next is the connect rest API. Different scenarios where you can use the connect rest API are to integrate a third party web application with Salesforce to notify users about an event or to display a feed on an external system after user is authenticated or to make feeds actionable and integrate with third party sites or simply create games that interact with the feed for notification. One another example which I can think of as of now is an app which can post a chat item to Twitter whenever the post include a particular hashtag. And 
the next thought which you might have in mind is that what is the difference between the connect trust api and the the normal api rest api so the data is structured for rendering on website and mobile devices in the case of connect rest api and also the returned information is localized to the user's time zone and language but that is not the case with the rest api then the changed values are tracked in a feed that are returned as value pair representation in case of connect rest api and the rate limits for the connect rest api is different compared to the the normal rest api so for connect rest api it is per user per application per hour whereas for the normal rest api it is controlled or the limit is by the organization next is graphql this is still in beta so this api allows developer to interact with salesforce through graphql and it provides a new way to create rich performant mobile and web applications so in graphql you will be able to query based on specific query filters and the results what you get will also can be specified like in the traditional rest apis you will be in in your response you will be getting you don't have much control over the rest apis when you getting back the response it will have more data than you are expecting like extra fields will be displayed you know maybe though, though that many details are not required and is a base stage so when you are using when salesforce bring up this graphql api uh, it it using this graphql api you can get only the required details in the response so that is the kind of flexibility or power that the graphql api will have so since this is in beta i'm i'm just giving a clue that such a api is there so that you all you all will be aware of i'm not covering this in much details let us move on let us see the api limits there are three types of api limits first one is a timeout limit timeout limit restrict the length of time for a single call which is allowed to run it is 10 minutes if the call takes longer than 10 minutes then we will get a response with a error message of timeout next is the concurrent limit concurrent request limit so it indicates if the number of long calls which run parallelly at one time if it if it cross this limit then it will hit the concurrent limit so concurrent limit varies by org type so for developer edition and trial logs it is 5 if there are more than 5 calls five long running calls in a single time then it will hit the concurrent request limit for production and sandboxes the limit is 25 now all the total limits cap the number of calls made within a rolling period of 24 hour period so all of this limits verify by sorry vary by ed, org edition license type and including any add on licenses purchased so for total request allocation again this is also for 24 hour period the for this developer edition over the period of 24 hours rolling period it can have up to 15000 calls for unlimited edition it is 100000 plus number of licenses multiplied by calls per license type added by the purchased api call add ons so these are the total request allocation limits and there are different ways in which you can check the remaining api calls in your org the first one is you can do a rest api call on the limits so you'll get a response 
on the limits of the org. The next way is on the company information page on the setup, you can search for company information in which you can see the API request for last 24 hour period, it is 40. And since this is a level up edition, it is showing as 15,000 max. You can also see the streaming API events and all here. Now this is one way and another place you can see is in the system overview. Here this is uh, under setter system overview we can see the API usage. So API request over the period of last 24 hours is again 40 and the percentage is also given here. So these are the three ways and also you can send notifications on API usage if it crosses a particular limit. So here on the screen you can see that when the org exceeds the number of API calls that you designate from setup you can use the API usage notifications and the, API and the notification recipient you can give here and what is the threshold at what percentage or over what period the notification should be sent. Till now we have seen different APIs. We try to understand each and every API. So choosing the right API for the integration need is actually an important decision. For that we should know what to be used and when to be used. So here on this slide I have put the information on the different APIs along with their protocol, the data format, the communication and also when to use which API. So I have captured this information on this slide. So let's go through this one by one. First one is the REST API and the protocol is REST. Data formats are JSON and XML. The communication is synchronous and when it can be used. It can be used when we are using mobile applications and web projects. Next is SOAP API. So the protocol is SOAP WSDL. Data format is only XML. Again this is synchronous communication and it is used when you want to integrate Salesforce with your orgs, ERP and finance systems. Next is connect REST API. The protocol is REST. The formats acceptable are JSON and XML. The communication is synchronous here except the photos or the use of photos. Uh, photos are processed asynchronously. And it can be used to display charter feeds, users, groups, especially in the mobile applications. Next is bulk API. Again, a REST protocol. The formats acceptable are CSV, JSON and XML. Bulk API is asynchronous and it can be used when working with large volume of data. Next is metadata API. Again, the protocol is SOAP, WSDL. Data format is XML. This is also asynchronous and used to migrate changes from a sandbox or testing or to a production environment, mainly from a migration standpoint. Next is streaming API. For the protocol is Bayux. So Bayux is a protocol for transporting asynchronous messages primarily over HTTP and the data format is JSON. This is asynchronous because this works in a PubSub model and it is used when we want to receive a near real-time streaming of data 
based on any changes which happen in the Salesforce records. And Salesforce publishes the notifications where the changes occur for the Salesforce records, whereas a subscriber can subscribe to it. The last one is the tooling API, which follows REST or SOAP protocol. The formats are JSON, XML, or custom, and the communication is synchronous, and it is used when you want to integrate the Salesforce metadata with other systems. So it is used to manage and deploy working copies of Apex class and triggers, Visual Force pages and components. Now let us see a few demos of these APIs. We can see the demo of multiple APIs what we discussed just now. So mostly uh, the demo I'll, demo testing I'll be doing using account object itself. As part of testing, I have already created an account record called test API, which is having account number as 123. Also, I have created a external ID field called customer external ID. This is an external ID field. Now, moving on to Postman to show the demo. In Postman, let us see SOAP API first. For, for the SOAP API, we will be doing a query on account object. So we are going to query account name where the account number is 123. For that first step is to get the session ID. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is the request for getting the session ID. It is a post HTTP method. This is the URL you have to use after the login URL slash services slash SOAP slash c c slash 49.0 this 49.0 is the version number and since soap is xml we have to use the xml body here you can see the username and password given here and i'm clicking on send yeah here you can see the server url so this is the url you have to use for further queries and this is the session id I am copying the session ID from here. Let us go to the SOAP API query now. Okay, you can see that I have used the server URL here followed by services slash slope slash sorry SOAP slash C slash 49. So here C indicates that it is a enterprise visdel being used. Now coming to the body, the session ID, this was previous session ID, which I am going to replace with the new one which I got. And this is the query string, select name from account where account number equal to 123. So I should be getting the return of test API, that should be the response I am getting. So this I am giving in the SOAP body. Let us click on send now. Yeah, so you can see that. I got the response of 200, status is 200, okay. And here the first, this is the limit, which is uh, there for the developer edition, which I'm using, 50,000 is the maximum limit. And then coming to the response, you can see the name, test API, this is the response which I got. So this is only one example on querying the record. So mainly SOAP UI you can use for the requirements where you can work with the WSDLs and XML data. Now let us see REST API. For that again I will have to get the OATH token. So I have already created uh, token here. So let me click this here. I have given grant type as password, client ID and client secret. These are from the connected app which I have already created and then the username and password. So when you are giving these details in the uh, parameter, it will get appended to the post URL. Now when I say password, it is 
uh, your password and the security token. I am clicking on send. This is again a post method. This will give you the token, the access token. Now the further the uh, API calls on the rest you will be doing using this access token and instance URL is the same as we saw earlier for SOAP UI so that I am not going to change. So I copied this access token here. going to the next rest api here the authorization under authorization i took type as bearer and i'm going to update the token which i got just now and here you can see it is a get api so this is the ur instance url followed by services followed by data version a subject and account here i'm querying the account object records clicking on send status is ok 200 now this is the response so if I am looking at the items so this is the read send items so first one is the account record test API and there is another one I got this also I created recently so these two are the account records which I got back using the api uh, url which i used for rest so as we have already seen rest is lightweight and it can be used for web-based applications and mobile applications so here the body can be either xml or json I will show you one more example where I am creating a record using REST API. So this was GET. Now GET means you are getting data, you are fetching data from Salesforce and showing it here. Now I am going to create one record. So create record again authorization bearer I am going to change to the latest one. Okay. going to the body here you can see that I am still using account object itself so what happens here is that one account this since this body this is JSON format so here the request is to create an account record with the name demo rest API account clicking on send okay now you can see that record got created Let's see this record in Salesforce. I'm going to Salesforce. I copied that ID from there. Yeah, you can see the account name called demo rest api account here okay this is how the rest api works
now let us go back and see how the charter api works okay let me copy back the auth token which we took earlier because okay now in charter again the authorization is bearer and let me copy paste the token so here the url you can see the url has changed for rest soap chatter for everything the url at the end after the version has changed here i am fetching the groups the chatter groups so that is how what this get method does so on the header i have given content type as application json now let us see i am clicking on send button so chatter as discuss if you want to integrate chatter into variety of applications you can use the chatter api yeah you can see the status ok 200 and i am checking for the details of the group okay these are other details like who's the user yeah you can see that chatter group is there let me take this chatter group uh, currently there is only one chatter group since this is a developer edition i created only for the demo purpose so yeah let me show you the data chatter group let us go to chatter yeah i am replacing the id what i got from the postman yeah it's a test connect api group so this is how the chatter api works now going back to postman to show tooling api let me copy the auth again tooling api as we discussed if you want to do some development and integration tools you can use the tooling api now here also the method is get and authorization let me change it the token the token i have changed header i have not added anything here the parameter you can see that i have added it's a query where i'm querying the name of apex class so since it's a new developer edition i don't have much apex class i've created only a couple of it so the url if you see when i added this parameter it automatically got appended to the url so here you can indicate using um, when you see each api itself you will understand what api it is okay so here you can see that it is using tooling api with a query okay i am going to click on send okay status is okay 200 okay so these are the as i mentioned there are only two apex classes which i created for demo one is demo controller other is demo handler uh, and this is the url for that each apex class and tooling api you can use to handle the metadata find grain details of the metadata i can show you one more example
for that i am opening the developer console okay opening the anonymous window i am going to print something so when i execute this in the anonymous window you can see the log here okay see the operation which has happened when i executed something in the anonymous window slash services slash data then version number and tooling so we understood that it is tooling api which is working behind to execute the anonymous window let us move on to the next api next one is metadata api so for metadata api as you know if we want to manage the customization in the environment if you want to migrate the changes deployments definitions we'll have to use the metadata api so here this is the url you have to use for post method instance url followed by services soap m5252 again is a version number so here i am not using any authorizations directly instead there are two items in the header one is soap action login and care set utf8 rest details since it is a soap api it is based on soap protocol okay the details are given in the body okay uh, so here i am trying to what what ha what i am have done in this xml statement is that xml is that i am trying to list all the custom objects using metadata api for that i have to take the session id from my previous api soap api request i think i should have it here yeah i have copied it here and then pasting this here instead of this session id and clicking on send you can see that status is 200 okay and i got the response here now if you go down you can see each object and its details you can see the object name custom object contact request these are the different objects in the environment in this particular developer edition environment so using metadata api this is just an example of how to use this as i mentioned this is this can be used for deployment of definition of all this metadata definitions from one org to another next one is the graphql since that is in beta i'm not going into much details i'm just showing how it will look like so here is how the url will look like at the end it will be appended with graphql then authorization token is required let me get the token first okay i took the token then coming here adding it on the bearer then coming to body here i'm querying the account record with the value of id and name so the as we saw earlier during the slide show this api can be used to give more streamlined responses only what you need will be returned in the response let us see how it works 
clear so it is ok to right now you see here that I got the ID and the name with value as edge communications here so if I want to print one more item like account number or uh, some other field let me see I want to print account number so simply append this again and send the record see I got the account number also here only what you need will be received in the response this is how GraphQL works I can show one more example of GraphQL using confilter query. So this is the request. Let me copy the token from the previous request. Uh, authorization is bearer token. Now in the body, I have added. Uh, so rest everything is the same. Just an uh, additional filter because with filter with a where clause where account filter account number like one two three. So previously we saw. We created the test API record initially, which should we should be uh, getting in the response here. Let me see. Clicking on send. Status OK 200. Yeah, I have received the record which is having account number as test as 123. So this is how GraphQL works. The next one we are going to discuss is the bulk API. So bulk API is used when we want to load large volume of data into Salesforce. For bulk API, we have several steps. First one is to create the job and then adding data to the job. Here is where we are adding the data, then closing the job and getting status of the job. So let us see one by one. So for creating the job, this is the request. First one is post and this is the URL. URL have job and in digest appended to it. And in header, I have added the bearer token. In the body, we have operation. So this is on account object, inserting records into account object. And this is the content type and line ending. So let us do the request here. Okay. 
status is okay 200 this is the id of the record let us go and see the job if it got created in salesforce so here in the in progress there is no jobs as of now let me refresh the screen yes so here you can see one job in progress with job type is bulk api version 2 insert and status is open okay these are the details next is to add the records to the job going back to postman next is adding data to job so this is the ne next request we are using put method here and the url is having the ingest id so we have to provide the job id here let me take the job id okay yeah i have to append the job id here then in the body the, i have given the name and account number as the fields as a headers and these are the account records um, these are the two columns of records which get created so in total four records will get created so this will only add the data to the job okay you can see status as 201 created let us go back to our work data job here you can see auto chunk batches are empty i'm refreshing the screen here you can see one record has been displayed and status is queued here status is open for the entire bulk api job so as soon as the data is added so bulk api will try to split that into chunks when we are getting large volume of data so here we are only inserting minimal records only four records now next step is to close the job so again we'll have to provide the job id and have to give the state as upload complete that marks the upload as completed so this is the status as of now i am refreshing the screen yeah now you can see the job as completed okay i am going back here and getting the status of the job which i performed just now i am pulling the success results okay when i pull the success result these are the ids of the new record which got created let us go back and see if these records got created going to accounts yeah you can see that bulk api test one similarly you can fetch all the records and uh, account number is 11 as i given in the postman next one is account number should be 12 This is how bulk API works. I have not demoed streaming API. So for streaming API, you have to come to setup. Take one example as platform event. I mean, one way of implementing streaming api's platform event other can be change data capture so for platform events you have to come here and create new platform event
you are defining new object name. So, saving it here. Okay. You can define the custom fields as required and this can be published and the subscribers will be able to. So, uh, when I say this it means that uh, using platform event you can identify any changes uh, sales source record changes and which can be published and the published changes can be subscribed by any subscriber. So, this is how platform event works. So, whenever you need near real time notifications of when a records are created or updated, you can use the streaming API. With that we have covered majority of the APS we wanted to cover for this session. Coming back to the slide. With that we have reached the end of this session. So here are the references which I have used to prepare this session. With that, we are winding up the session. Once again, thank you so much Park Dream and Coordinators for this opportunity you have given me the second time. Thank you all the sponsors and thank you everyone who is there in this session. I hope this session was useful to you to get some insights on how the APIs work. You can reach me in Twitter and LinkedIn. I have given the handles here. I am happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much everyone.